It's a dream come true and you've made it as a professional footballer. But what do you do when it's all over? I think with me, the realisation that you, you are never going to find anything that is going to satisfy you and, and, and have that burning desire like football was, you, nothing can replace it. And, and if you try and replace it, um, I think you're going to, you, you will fail probably. Um, you can, if you get your head around the fact that whatever you're going to do really is going to be second best to it, I think then you know you can um, you can try and move forward. I was thinking about staying in football as a coach, possibly a manager, and then I changed tact and I decided I needed to get a job to prove that I could do something else, and so I applied for numerous jobs. Uh, and it took me a long time to get any form of reply. To me, thinking a lot of thinking time, a lot of uh, what if, what if I'd have done that? Why didn't do that? Why, you know, what can I get into? Um, so eventually, my, my friend, a good friend of mine who's got his own building company, um, invited me just to get out of the house really and just said, look, come and labor on for me, do a bit of work, a bit of graft which is something I'd never done. Being a footballer, you don't get your hands dirty, you get your knees and your, you know, everything else dirty, but it was, a, it was an eye-opener, you know, and it was probably the best thing I did looking back, you know, because it got me out of the house. Um, I was probably mentally going through a bit of a difficult time dealing with retiring and, and not playing football um, at that level again, which was tough. Um, but ultimately I, I was out and about and, and, and mixing with people again and, and getting a sweat on. And, and ultimately, although it was only labouring on for, for a builder, it was, um, it was you know, certainly uh, rewarding. During the 70s, Ellen Road was like Fort Knox. Instead of gold, it stored something much more precious. Goals, talent, skill, silverware. Over time, it turned to tin until another rich seam was discovered and subsequently squandered. The same can be said of some of the players that Leeds have had over the years. We've had all types. Internationals, tall players, slow players, skillful players, players who could only head the ball, but they were all heroes to the fans. One such player still holds a special place in Leeds' history as he raises the shutter of his life after United. When I finished, uh, my first thoughts were, I really wanted to stay in football. I wanted to, um, I wanted to, to get into coaching and managing and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I started down the route of, of doing my qualifications, my coaching qualifications. But that's going to be a two or a three or maybe a four year cycle. Um, so, in, in that time, um, you've still got to earn a living, you know. Um, so uh, what do you do? Um, you speak to people, um, maybe you can invest. If you've got a bit of money, you can invest into things, that kind of thing. But I, I, went, I actually qualified as a financial advisor, went down that road for a couple of years. It didn't really suit me. It didn't, you know, it didn't, it was, I wasn't happy doing it. So I came out of that and, um, and, and, and was continuing with my football and my coaching. Um, unfortunately, personal circumstances, um, you know, divorce, young kids, um, responsibility of looking after your, uh, looking after your children uh, meant that I had to eventually turn away from football um, because I couldn't stay in the game um, and be a father um, on hand to look after my children at the same time. So, um, you know, the choice was quite simple for me. My, my children came obviously a lot before anything else. Um, and, and then just by pure coincidence, a good friend of mine who was a motor dealer, um, we started doing a few things together and I just sort of fell into um, being a motor dealer. And, and here I am, you know, 10 years later, still doing it. I finished through injury. Um, I thought I was probably, I'd like to have thought I was, I'd got another four or five years um, playing and it came as a little bit of a bolt out of the blue. Um, and I think you do put 
things in place um, with the idea that eventually you are going to retire so you know you start putting things into place and having ideas of what you want to do afterwards but when it came as quickly as mine did it was like I say a bit of a bolt out of the blue really um, and, and, and difficult to get your head around. You know I, I was I was just 30 and I found myself not only you've got to, you've got to deal with the fact that your your career is now finished, is it's over. Somebody sat you down and said you're not going to play football again, which is, you know, the biggest hit you're going to take really. Um, but you then, at the time, you know, you've got I've got a young family, you've got um, commitments, you've got financial commitments, and you sat there as a 30 year old guy, totally unqualified. You know, yeah, you you're good at kicking the football around, but. That's 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 your lot, really. Um, some lads were, were were better than that. Some lads stay. You know, I know David Weatherall when I was at Leeds, he stayed on at university and got, you know, some great qualifications behind him. And um, but most lads don't do that. Most lads are just straight into football from school, like I was. And 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 football's your life. Um, and yeah, you, you know, you, you I suppose you 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 feel like you you're on the on the scrap heap a little bit, really. As, as a footballer, you're, 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 you're judged on your performance and you're given feedback of your performance on a daily basis, not just in front of 30,000 people or 20,000 people, because you know, they will obviously let you know whether you're playing well or you're playing badly. Um, but the manager, the coaching staff, every day in training, if you're not putting it in, if you're not on, you know, on edge, um, They'll 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 tell you you know and they'll come down on you and so you so you're judged every single day and then you come out of football and you've got to do something else unless you want to stay in football, um, and, and 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 it's a completely different environment, totally different environment. And I know you know you know, I know a lot of lads struggle to get their head around that fight and um, and and it is difficult to pick yourself up and, and dust yourself down. And, I get asked quite a lot, actually. Um, you know, do you do you sell cars to footballers? And the honest answer is no, I don't, um, because they're hard work. You know, they are hard work. They don't turn up on time. You make appointments. They, they, you give them a call. You'll drive to wherever it is to meet them. And oh, I'm I'm having a game of snooker with me, mate. Can we do it tomorrow? And it's that kind of thing. And 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 so they are. You know, it's quite frustrating when you're trying to run a business and you. You know, you've, you, you've got your working week all sorted out and, and, you know, players are a little bit, you know, here today, gone tomorrow sort of thing. And, and, and the, I think that's, that's the environment of football as well, that you can, ne you can never plan anything in football because you don't know where you are from one day to the next. You know, what day, you know, what are you doing on Thursday? Well, I have no idea. We, I'm training, but we might be training in the morning. We might be training in the afternoon. I might be playing in the reserves. I might... You know, so they, they can never really plan anything, really. Um, so I've, I've not really ever dealt with, with many footballers. I've, I've sold the odd one to, to the odd, odd lad like, but it's not, it's not a market that I actually try and um, attack as such. I mean, I think, I think um, the, the market, the business of, of being a motor dealer and motor trader and, and buying and selling cars has, has changed dramatically over the last 10 years from... from um, you know, people had pictures and, and, and forecourts and you walked on there with whatever money you had in your pocket and, you know, what have you got? Whereas now everything is electronic, internet based. You can you can sit on the bus and, and you know, look through your phone, at hundreds of thousands of cars, which are all up for sale. So the way that the, the car market has gone and has moved on with um, with the likes of the internet and email and that kind of thing, um, has, has changed it dramatically, really. So, um, and you try and keep up to speed with that. So, you know, I don't have to have a a pitch as such. I, you know, I work from a warehouse, and I've got a, I've got a um, a website, and, and 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 I work it that way. Yeah, that's uh, that was a photograph taken on. I think it was my debut at uh, Stamford Bridge for Norwich, and um, yeah, it's just a piece of memorabilia that I've got, and you know, I thought it'd be a nice place to have it in my office. No Leeds stuff here now? I haven't got anything of Leeds in the office, at the, uh, no. I, I've got plenty of stuff at home though, and uh, you know, pictures on the wall, and especially 
you know, the day that we won won the championship, and, and I was lucky enough to score the goal at Bramall Lane, which is not far from here, really. Um, so I've got my shirt, a signed my signed shirt up on the wall, and yeah, that's got pride of place in my uh, in my house. You know, I think supporters are sometimes surprised to hear, um, you know, when players do sell sell memorabilia on and sell medals on and that kind of thing. But um, you know, the sort of like the the slant that I always give on it is that my memories of the day and of, of what happened at that time are all logged in, 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 in my head. And I can remember, you know, being in the changing rooms and things what were said and the games and the goals. And, and, and although you do get a medal and it's, you know, it's worth something to you because it represents that you've won something, um, your memories are, are, are far more precious to you than the actual, you know, piece of, piece of metal or the memory or, or the medal that you've got really. And, and so, um, so yeah, I can, I can understand why people do, you know, especially when they're supposed to be struggling for money or they, they decide to move them on. Um, because, you know, you, nobody can take, as they say, nobody can take your memories away from you, can they? Um, I was at home. My partner at the time was working part-time. That's all she had, that job at the time. And, and I was left, as it was, holding the baby, you know, every day and, and being the, the father at home.